In this lesson, we're going to learn about arc length in circles. So the first thing we have to talk about here are units. So, so far you've dealt with different units for lengths, such as inches, centimeters, feet, meters. You've seen different units for volumes, for areas, for perimeter. But for angle measures, we've always talked about angle measures in degrees. So now what we're going to do is we're going to introduce this new unit of measurement, which is going to be called radians. And you've heard of this before in your calculator, when you've had to convert your calculator from radian mode, which is the default on it, to degree mode, uh, because we've always dealt with angles and degrees. So now we're going to look at, well, what happens or what is um, an angle measured in radian mode. So really what this means, the radian measure of an angle or central angle is equal to the ratio of the arc to the ratio of the radius. So meaning if I were to look at this picture, um, this angle measure in radians would be equal to the length of this arc in whatever unit. So when I say the length of the arc, I'm talking about in inches, centimeters, feet, um, meters, that distance or that length compared to the length of the radius in the same units. So meaning if this was five centimeters, well then the radius would be five centimeters and then that means that this would equal one radian. Um, because I would be doing 5 centimeters divided by 5 centimeters, which gives me 1 radian. Now, if these, the arc length and the radius, if those were different, that just means that your radians would be different. So, for example, if this arc length were 10 centimeters and the radius was only 5, well, 10 divided by 5 means I have an angle of 2 radians. So that's what's happening here. In this particular picture, we're saying that the arc length is equal to the radius, and that's how you get one radian. That's what one radian really means. So here's the formula that I just talked about. So if we want to find the angle, so I'm going to just write um, angle in radians. Remember that symbol theta is just a commonly used symbol for um, angle measures. So if I have the angle and radi radians, that's the same thing as S divided by R. So S is the arc length, and this is the radius. Um, the radius and the arc length have to be in the same units. So these are going to be in units like inches, centimeters, feet, etc. Some kind of length unit. Um, and then these have to be the same. So these will always be the same units between these. Otherwise, you wouldn't be able to divide and get radians. So that's kind of where this whole idea of radians comes from. Now, you might be thinking, well, why is this helpful? So this is helpful if we want to find the length of the arc of a circle. So instead of saying that the um, circle is in, uh, the measure of the arc is 50 degrees, what if I want to know the length? Because we have a radius, which is a unit of length. What if I want to know the length of the arc? So oftentimes you're going to see this formula um, not written to solve for the angle, but you're going to see it like this. You're going to see it written to solve for the arc length because that's really what we usually want to find with these. So I call this the SOAR formula, um, meaning it kind of looks like the word SOAR, but it's S is for the arc length, theta is for the angle in radians, and R is the radius. So basically the arc length is equal to theta times r. So where did I get that from? If you take this radian measure formula, multiply both sides by r, you can see that the r's would cancel and you'd have s equals theta times r. Um, I'm going to just get rid of those r's though because I don't want you to think that that's part of this original formula. So that's where this comes from. So from here on out, I'm going to use this formula here because that's the most commonly used um, formula for these types of problems. So if we're given this example, it says in a circle whose radius is 20 and a central angle um, intercepts an arc of 15. So this is going to be S. That's the arc. This is the R. We want to find the number of radians in the angle, in the central angle. So we're trying to find theta. 
So we use our SOAR formula. We plug in what we know. So we have 15 theta is what we're trying to find times 20. And we have 15 centimeters and 20 centimeters. So when I divide both sides by 20, the centimeters are gone, which should happen for these. So we have 15 divided by 20. That's going to give us 3 fourths. And my units on this are going to be radians. So 3 fourths radians is equal to theta. So that's the answer. So the angle measure is 3 fourths of a radian um, for this particular situation. So if we look at the next problem here, same idea. We're going to go ahead. So we have our central angle here is given to us. Um, it intercepts an arc of 3 inches. So this is the S. This is the arc length. We're trying to find the radius. So again, I'm going to go ahead and plug right into that same formula. So SOAR, so S equals theta times R. Um, I know the arc length is 3. I know that my angle is pi over 4. Remember, that's just a number. That's a common um, way that you're going to see radian measures. They're going to be left in terms of pi. So that's just a number times R. And now what I want to do is I want to find the radius. So I'm going to work on getting this. I want to show you how you would leave it in terms of pi. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply both sides by 4 to get rid of that 4 in the bottom. So that means I have 12 equals pi times r. So that means when I solve for the radius, I'm going to divide both sides by pi. And that would mean that the radius is equal to 12 over pi. And then whatever the units are for the arc length are the units for the um, radius. Remember, those units will always be the same. So there's my radius. I could also write this as a decimal, but since it doesn't say to round, I'm going to leave it as an exact answer. The next example here, we have our radius. We have our central angle. And it intercepts the arc of the circle. Find the length of the arc. So now we're trying to solve for s. So we write our formula. We show our substitution. So 5 radians for the angle. 9 for the radius. The arc length is equal to 45. When I multiply those, remember the arc length has the same units as the radius. So it's going to be in centimeters. So that's it. So basically you can see all it is is plugging into this formula and then rearranging it so that you solve for what it's asking. Um, and then this last example here says we have an arc of a circle that is 6 centimeters in length. So this is the arc that is 6 centimeters. So this is the S. Intercepts a central angle of um, 1.5 radians. So this is theta. Find the number of degrees or find the number of centimeters in the radius. So we're trying to find R. So again, same thing. Plug into the formula. We know that the arc length is 6 centimeters. We know that theta is 1.5. And that the radius is what we're trying to find. Divide both sides by 1.5. And we'll get our radius. So we get our radius is equal to 4 units on that radius are the same as the units for the arc length. So it's going to be in centimeters. So a couple of things to remember here for your key ideas. First of all, you got to know your formula, your SOAR formula. You have to remember that the angle or theta is always in radians. It has to be in order for the formula to work because by the definition of a radian, and the radius and the arc length are always measured in linear units for length. And they have to be the same units. So centimeters, inches, feet, meters, yards, they always have to be the same units. For the radius and the arc length, angle is in radians. So get your key ideas written down and do your check your understanding problems.